know what they say. See Naples and die. Don't worry, Rico. I'll see Naples and live. Very peacefully, too, I hope. A little rest will do the three of us a world of good. Not still in holiday mood. The visiting the island of Monte Cristo was more of a pilgrimage than a holiday. Yes, of course. What do you say, Jacopo? How about putting alongside the little jetty tonight? Prepare yourself for checkmate, my friend. I'll give you a hint. Never neglect the pawn in the game. Well, can I do something for you? What is it you want? Uh, Who stabbed you? Uh, Who was it? Uh, Try to tell me. Uh, uh, Did you know him, Edmond? No. At least I have an idea. I've seen him before, but I can't quite... Anything in his pockets? Twenty years faithful service with the House of Savini. Bankers of Paris, Naples and Rome. Savini? They're your bankers here, aren't they? Why, yes. In fact, I own a lot of their shares. Luigi Savini, uh, the head of the house of Savini, is a very dear old friend of mine. That must be where I've seen this man before. Now, I wonder what was bringing him here, to me. Something he was desperately anxious to tell you. That somebody was desperately anxious I shouldn't hear. I think I must pay a call on Monsieur Savini. Your Luigi Savini at home. At, at home, monsieur? Will you give me my card, please? But, but monsieur, haven't you heard? Heard what? The master's dead, monsieur. Dead and buried three days ago. Savini? Dead? Good evening, Count. So you did get my message. Message? Why, no, I've been at sea. I'm here quite by chance. Oh, this is terrible news. I had no idea. Ah, yeah. oh, poor Savini. He'd been ill for some time. But it's fortunate that you arrived in time. In time? For what? The reading of the will. My job, I'm afraid, as the family lawyer. And if you will kindly step into the library. Count of Monte Cristo is here. Edmund. Vittorio. How nice to see you again. You know my cousin Bianca. Oh, yes. We met briefly some years ago. When I visited your uncle's villa at Cannes. I remember very well. Signor Durac, Count. Sit here, Edmund. Thank you. And now, if we may proceed. This is the last will and testament of Luigi Alessandro Savini. Just a moment, Rosa. As Signor Savini's business partner, I know that his financial interests were extremely complex. His will is quite a formidable document. I suggest we need only hear the uh, essential facts. It only remains for me to announce Sino Savini's successor to the banking house which bears his name. He leaves his fortune, his investments, and his entire estate to his niece, Signorina Bianca. Bianca? But I thought that... Are you certain, Brosa? The entire estate? The entire estate. Uncle always led me to believe that I was to be his heir. Well, he's talking about me carrying on the family business, training me to take his place. Are you sure there's no mistake? There is no possibility of a mistake, Signor Vittorio. The will is absolutely clear and in perfect legal order. You have my condolences. I understand your feelings too, my boy. But uh, 
I don't think I ought to say more than that. It's not for me to question my late partner's wishes. But it isn't what he would have wished. I know it isn't. Why should he deliberately mislead me? Bianca, you, you didn't expect this, did you? No, Vittorio. I never dreamed. Signor Brother, are you absolutely sure? Quite sure. I have copies of the will. You can see it for yourselves. Forgive me, Bianca, if I seem ungracious to you. In fact, I offer you my congratulations. All the luck in the world, Bianca. Of course, I must ask you to release me from my promise to you. Release you? Oh, no, Vittorio. What reason could you possibly have? Forgive me, Bianca, a very good reason. Bianca and I are only second cousins. We were engaged to be married. But now that she is the head of the house of Savini and I am... Victoria, wait, please. I am sorry, darling. But I can't risk being accused of marrying you in order to recoup my losses. Victoria! As you remarked earlier, Signor Broza, it was fortunate I arrived in time. In time for what? For the reading of the will, of course. What's the date of it? The 16th of April, 1830. Oh. Well, of course, it would be before Vittorio arrived here. So I suppose it's understandable he's not mentioned. It's a pity Savini didn't get around to make another will. Well, good night, gentlemen. It is to be hoped that the Count doesn't get too inquisitive. If he does, it will be just too bad for him. <laughs> oh, leave it to me, Monsieur Le Comte. Leave it to me. The whole affair will be dealt with appropriately. Do you understand? Why, it's a privilege to save the Count of Monte Cristo from the slightest embarrassment. I regret, Signor Questore, I did not summon you last night, the moment I saw the man was dead. Very remiss of me. Remiss? Oh, no. Just being tactful, that's all. I was very busy last night. A dinner engagement. You understand? And to be dragged back to examine a carcass. Oh, oh that's the quayside nobody. Uh, who got himself stabbed in the dark? An affair of the heart. Uh, quarrel among thieves. In that case, uh, am I at liberty to pursue my own inquiries? My own way? Oh, I give you a free hand, monsieur. It's the least one can do for someone who's been so free-handed in our city. The law must always proceed strictly according to the law. As a private citizen, may I use, uh, shall we say, unconventional methods? Exactly. How well we understand one another. But uh, be careful. So distinguished a visitor. I wouldn't want to find you with a knife in your mouth. It would be my privilege to save you such embarrassment. Good. Good. Be sure you let me know when you find out the dead man's name. Certainly. And monsieur, don't take too lightly, I beg of you, what I've said about being careful. Dangerous enterprises in Naples are very dangerous. Bye, monsieur. Good day, Signor Spitari. <laughs> Very obliging gentleman. He must be very popular among the local criminals. At any rate, he made one thing very clear. We can look into the Savini affair ourselves. You're sure there's a connection between this murder and the Savini will? I'm convinced of it. There's something very wrong with that will. A forgery, Jacopo? No. They're too smart for that. You mean Savini may have made a later one, after Vittorio joined him? He must have done. I was in the old man's confidence. I know he intended to make Vittorio his heir. Well, he used to think the world of the boy. Now, some businessman like Savini would not neglect such an important matter as the making of a new will. If we assume that a later will was suppressed, we must know the motive. Who stands to gain? The girl, obviously. I'm certain she doesn't know anything about it. Besides, the will may not have been merely suppressed. It may have been destroyed. Then what can we do? My friends, I'll tell you what we can do. We can do a little visiting. Let's pay a call to a certain family lawyer. Charming, honest, trustworthy gentleman, if ever there was one. Or well, not now, Rico. Let's say uh, two o'clock in the morning, when we can look around without disturbing said uh, charming, honest, trustworthy gentleman.
Sabini. No. Yeah. Dirac. Don't let him see me. Jacopo. Fun while it lasted, anyway. Have you found anything yet, Edmond? No. If Rose and Durac destroyed a will, there's nothing here to prove it. Once the will's destroyed, I don't see how anything can prove it. You forget, Rico, that besides Bros and Durac, two other people must know. Who? The two witnesses, of course. They have to be silenced somehow. What is it, Jacopo? As to the other matter, Giovanni Luca has accepted our terms, but Antonio Bardo has refused and disappeared. This could be the two witnesses, but of course we have nothing to prove it, have we? Signor Questore! At this hour, to what do we owe the honor? A thousand pardons, monsieur. A thousand pardons. I, I couldn't keep up with you after you got down from the lawyer's roof. What? You've been watching us. Or just to see you're not disturbed. No interference from overzealous policemen, if you understand. You got away so quickly, I had to make quite sure you were safe. So I took the liberty of stepping on board and... A thousand pardons, monsieur. A thousand pardons. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Oh, I nearly forgot. I, I've got some news for you. It's about the man that was stabbed. Well, who was he? I think now I made a note of it somewhere. It was, uh, oh, Bardo, that's right. Antonio Bardo. Antonio Bardo. Well, I think I've missed enough of my beauty sleep. Good night, gentlemen. Good night. Good night, here for sorry. So, the poor devil was the missing witness. And he came here that night because he was counting on me to expose a crime and see justice done. Yes, Jacobo. They killed the one man who was still a danger to them. Maybe he could still be a danger to them. It was very kind of you to come to cheer me up. It was very kind of you to ask me. You love Vittorio very deeply, don't you? It grieves me to see you so unhappy. Oh, if only Uncle hadn't made such stupid will. I'm sorry. I know I shouldn't say things like that. But what difference does it make whether the state is mine or Vittorio's? Please, Edmund, can't you make him see there's no sense in letting him spoil our happiness? Hello, gentlemen. Did you enjoy your game of billiards? Rosa was not in very good form, I'm afraid. Neither would you have been, Durac. If you'd been violently assaulted in the middle of the night by a gang of ruffians... How unpleasant for you, Signor Broza. But what a good thing you frightened them off before they could steal anything. Now, if you'll excuse me, I promise I'll show Vittorio over the yacht and... Of course, I must return to my patient. Your patient? Oh, yes, I have a wounded man aboard. How was he wounded, monsieur? Oh, very treacherously, I regret to say. The knife in his back. And who is the man, monsieur? 
Oddly enough, a former employee of the House of Savini, a man by the name of uh, Bardo. Bardo? Wasn't that the name of the man who used to be Uncle's clerk? The one who retired some time ago? I believe it was. But how did this happen to him, Monsieur? Who stabbed him? As yet, uh, he hasn't been able to tell me. But he's beginning to show sign of regaining his speech. So I hope tomorrow he'll be able to tell me exactly what happened. It's all I can do, Edmund. A new life abroad. I can't possibly stay here now. Don't decide anything yet, Vittorio. There may be some developments. None that can affect me. I suppose by now you have read the will in full. Yes. Why? Well, as a matter of curiosity, what happens to the estate if Bianca should die? It goes to her children. I suppose she doesn't marry. Suppose she dies without having any children. And then the entire estate passes on to the business partner, Durac. Will you be advised by me? Make up with Bianca. Go back to her. Edmund, you can't ask me to do that. Do you think I can't stand on my own feet? I've already made my position clear to Bianca. You can't expect me to go crawling back to her now. You love Bianca, don't you? It doesn't alter the fact that I still have some pride. Listen to me. Suppose I were to tell you that Bianca's life is in danger. Would your pride matter then? How can her life be in danger? Don't ask me questions now. You'll know in good time. Right now, do as I tell you at once. Go back to her. And see that she's protected night and day. All right. If you say so. Well, what's the next move, Edmund? An early night for me, Eureka. I've been missing far too much sleep lately. You and Jacopo will look better for a little sleep, too. Via de Russia. Any password? Any password? Naples. What do you want? We have business here. Naples. I advise you to keep perfectly still. My aim is excellent. Ironic, isn't it, Count? Both three of my men fall into your little trap, and the three of you fall into mine. You've been extremely foolish to meddle in this business, Count. You realize you've now become a serious danger. You flatter me, monsieur. Not at all. The Savini fortune is too large. We've already gone too far to take any chances on how much you know. And what I don't know, I can guess. As an example, I know you destroyed Savini's last will, so that under an earlier one, the girl would inherit the estate. It is my guess that in due time, she would have met with an accident, which would have made you the head of the house of Savini. I know that Broza conspired with you from the beginning, but I can only guess how much you're going to pay him. Oh yes, there's another thing I don't know, and I can't even guess. What's the point in wearing that stupid mask, Durak? Your second big mistake, Count. Your first was ever to set foot in Naples. I'm afraid, my dear Count, you're going to find it very difficult to get out of here. Oh, come now. Surely you exaggerate. I apologize for mistaking your identity. May I hazard another guess? The witness who was willing to be bribed. 
Edorak? Senor Johnny Luca? Keep me an eye on me, Signor Questore. A thousand pardons, Monsieur. A thousand pardons. Uh, don't apologize. Just tell me how you do these things. With your luck, Monsieur. I happen to be taking a look at your ship. Uh, purely routine, you understand, in your own interests. And what should I find? Three prisoners? Pure luck, huh? Just a routine inspection, exactly at the right moment. Signor Questore, you're a fraud. A fraud, Monsieur? Pretending to give me a free hand to pursue my own inquiries. Well, monsieur, you yourself said the law must proceed according to the law. Oh, I find it so tedious. Well, I can't use your unconventional methods, so I ask you, monsieur, what's the next best thing? How well we understand each other. Come, have some breakfast with me. <laughs> Take them away. Well, goodbye, Edmund. We can never thank you and your friends enough. We owe everything to you. When I return to Naples, I expect to dandle on my knee the future heir of the House of Savini. Now, see to it, you two. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Bye, Jacobo. Bye, Rick. I'm going to see Naples and live peacefully, he says. A quiet time will do us all the world of good, he says. <laughs> All clear, Jacopo. Rico, stand by to put the sea. Stand by to put the sea. Aye, sir. 